this video we're going to talk about modules or as they're sometimes referred to more generally in other languages libraries python uses the terminology modules uh, but in both cases we're referring to code that's been written by other people uh, which is incredibly useful and they've been made it available to share uh, so that you and others can use it in your own programs uh, you may find yourself later that you will write some sort of, of these modules or libraries to share um, but for now we're going to see how to make use of this uh, when other people have written the code. Uh, you've already done some of this when you've used the NumPy or Matplotlib or libraries, uh, but we'll go through this in a little bit more detail, uh, the specifics of how you can bring this into your code. So we're going to go through a short lecture on this, um, uh, just to give you some background on this and how to picture this, how to think about these modules or these libraries. So what is a library? So this is a terminology that's used in many, many different programming language. Uh, it refers to code that contains functions or very specific data types. Let me remind you when I say data types, I'm talking about floats, uh, integers, lists, um, and then there'll be some other data types that we encounter. So you may have some separate code that has these functions or data types defined, uh, and it's shared and distributed in some way so that other people can use it. Uh, usually people are using it because it is incredibly useful. And of course, you don't want to have to write everything yourself. You don't want to have to reinvent the wheel every time you want to make a plot or do some particular calculation. Uh, and so you can make of use of what is already out there. Python specifically uses the terminology module, as do some other languages. And a module is really what Python calls a, a library, as, you're, as you might hear in other programming languages. Now, once you have access to a module, you have access to its entire toolbox. And as I mentioned before, this is so you don't have to reinvent the wheel. Now, bringing in this code to your program, uh, you have a couple of different ways to do it. Some of them are easier than others. Some of them can introduce problems. Uh, so in this lecture, we'll go through those. Uh, what modules are out there? Well, there's a whole bunch of different ones out there, way too many to mention, literally hundreds and hundreds of modules. Uh, the ones we'll tend to use uh, in this class, and for those of you that are in the um, physics program, uh, you'll use the math module, NumPy, which has a lot of these very fast numerical tools. The num in NumPy stands for numerical. Um, SciPy with a lot of other scientific tools. Matplotlib for plotting and graphing. And some of you uh, who are more interested in data science may wind up using the requests module, which allows you to download websites and files. You can use this for web scraping, that is to get data off of websites. Uh, and of course, there's tons of others. So how do you use these modules? Well, you're going to import the module. Import here has the same uh, meaning as the English word import. You're going to bring it in from somewhere else. Um, so you can do import math, and then you can do math.sign of x. Or you can import the function you want from the module. So from math, import sign, and then you can use sign of x. Or you can import all the modules from the module. This makes use of a wildcard. Um, so from math import star, and then you don't, uh, you don't have to use the math dot, it's already available. We'll go through this in a bit more detail, but you can refer to this slide if you, uh, if you forget some of this. Okay, so let's give this a try. that other people have written. Um, we're going to go through this uh, exercise making use primarily of the math module, but all the syntax and terminology that I can use you can apply to other modules as well. And the text here just reminds us that uh, we're going to use this modules terminology, although you may hear people refer to them as libraries, including me. Um, so you don't always have to import modules. There's a lot of functions and data types already built into Python uh, that we use regularly. I've shown you the len function to get the length of a list. Um, and there's some other super, super helpful functions. Uh, for instance, if you want to get the maximum and minimum of a bunch of numbers, you can use the max and min function. Uh, and we don't even have to import any of these. So to show you this, I've uh, written out a list of a bunch of numbers here. You can scroll over. Uh, to see that there's a bunch of numbers here and if I wanted to know the length of it uh, I don't want to have to count them if I want to know the minimum I don't want to have to go through them one by one same with the maximum uh, and so what I can do is I can just do print 
Uh, I'll add some explanatory text. So I'll use an F string here. So I'll put here uh, the length of my list is, uh, here I'll say the length of numbers, which is a list, is, and then here I can actually just put len numbers. And if I wanted to, I could have just done like, you know, x equals len numbers if I wanted to. Uh, but here I'm actually going to include it in, uh, in my print statement. I don't need to use it again. First time I run it, it takes a moment. The length of numbers reminds you a list is 10, so there's 10 things in there. Uh, I could have also just printed X if I wanted, um, but I'll just put it like this. Okay, so I'm going to copy this uh, line here. You know, the spaces I put in. Um, and of course, I can also use these max and min functions I mentioned. So the maximum um, of numbers is, and here I just use max. And then for minimum, the minimum of these numbers, and I can use min. The maximum of the numbers is 0.912. I trust Python rather than going through it. Uh, the minimum number is uh, 0.393. So I didn't need to import anything from Python to have access uh, to these, but as we've seen for more advanced math functions, we need to use like the math module, and there'll be others that we'll be using. Now, um, we'll make use of the import function every time we do this. So there's four different ways I'm gonna show you, but they all make use of this import um, instruction in Python, which brings in the code. Now, the four ways we'll go through is to import only the functions or data types that we want, import all the things, everything from the, the module. Uh, we can import the module and then reference the functions uh, using the full name, or we can import the module, but rename it with a shorter name, and this is what I prefer, uh, and you've actually been doing when you've uh, been doing uh, some of the plotting. So let's look at each of these. If we only want certain functions and we know what they are, you can do from module, import function one, comma function two, comma function three, and so on, so long as these are separated by commas, you're good. So let's try it with our math function. Uh, we'll do from math import. Uh, let's grab the cosine function, we'll grab the square root, we'll grab pi for good measure. And now I can use these all. Uh, and I could just do, uh, let's see, x equals, uh, let's see, the cosine of the square root of and then all in parentheses pi times pi. So I multiply pi times pi, I take the square root of that, I get the cosine, print x, and some of you may already know what this is going to be, I get minus 1. So that's because I have pi squared, I take the square root of that, well the square root of pi squared is pi, the cosine of pi is negative 1. So because I knew I only needed the cosine, the square root, and the pi function, or pi number, uh, I could just import those specifically. So from math import, and I get them. Now there's another way to do it, making use of a wildcard. So a wildcard pops up in many programming languages. Uh, it's a symbol that can mean anything, or in our case, everything. So in our case, the asterisk is a wild card. So I can do from module import star, which means we can get all the functions in the module. Now this is actually quite dangerous. I do not recommend it. Um, and this is because you could be importing from two different modules, but they could have functions with the same name. And we'll see this happens between the math and the numpy functions. Um, you could have a cosine function in both math and numpy, but they behave differently. And then you could have problems with your code. So I'm going to show you this approach because um, you might see it in other pieces of code, but do not use it in this class. So if I do from math import star, I can do the same thing I did before. I can do x equals cosine of the square root of pi times pi, and then I can print x, and everything works. Uh, and because I've imported star, I also have access to a whole bunch of other things. So I can do y equals sine of pi times the log of 3, 
I don't know why I want to do that. Eh, it's printing the wrong, typing the wrong thing. So whatever this is, expression is here. And I brought in sign and log even though I didn't type them out here, but my star brings them all in. And look, you might think that, oh my gosh, that's way easier. I don't have to even know what I'm going to need. I just bring in everything and then I use it. Uh, but this way can uh, cause trouble. So I encourage you not to do it. Um, you can also import the module and use the full name. This is what we've been doing in the math um, library uh, for most of this course. Um, so if I import the module, I can reference any function or data type so long as I precede that function, which means type before it, module name, and then a period. So if I just import math, then I can reference everything by preceding it with math dot. So I can do x equals math dot cosine, math dot square root, times math dot pi, times math dot pi. So again, I want to access pi, so I need to do math dot pi. I want to access the square root, so I do math dot square root. And then I've got math dot cosine. And then I get uh, the same answer as before. Now this is a lot of typing, but once I've got the math module imported, you know, I can do y equals uh, log 10. No, sorry, math dot log 10. I think that works. Of 100, I get 2. So once I've got math imported, I can just reference anything I want with math. Dot. Now, math is only four letters, so that's not really a lot to type, but sometimes you're uh, bringing in uh, some module which has a much longer name. And you don't want to have to type that all the time, so this is actually my favorite one uh, where you import the module as nickname, meaning you give it a very short name. You could even give it one letter if you want. So a lot of people will import math with an M as M. Uh, I tend to bring it in with a, either just full math or MA so I don't get confused if I've got a variable named M. So let me show you what I mean. Um, so I can import math as MA. And now I can do all the stuff that I did before, x equals MA dot co. So I don't have to type out the full math, um, MA dot square root of ma dot pi times ma dot pi. You get the same answer, and I've just typed ma. Now again, this looks like it's probably uh, doesn't make as much sense because math is only four letters, uh, ma is only two, um, so we don't really save ourselves much, but uh, it is very useful for uh, when you have longer names of your modules. And you still get to keep it, you know, the safe way. You don't, you can still uh, not confuse. This way you don't have to worry about confusing yourself between any functions that have the same names. Now with any of this you have access to the help functions. Um, so you can use the tab or these help functions where you use a question mark. Um, and when you do this you type the module name period and then hit the tab button. You'll see all the different functions and data types. So first you have to make sure that math is imported. And I know that we did this before, but I'm just emphasizing. If you want to do that in one cell, and then watch what I do here. I do math dot, and then you can't see my fingers, uh, but I'm now hitting the tab function, or sorry, the tab key on my keyboard, and I get to see all the different functions. So if I don't have access to looking this up online, and I just want to remind myself of something, uh, this is a way to look at all these things. So you see that there's functions here where these little squares, nan and pi, are actually uh, values uh, that have meaning to them. Same thing with tau, which is 2 pi. So from this, I need to be like, oh yeah, that's how you spell pi, p, i, and then um, boom, if I wanted something. You can also learn more about it by typing a question mark in front of it. So if I wanted to learn more about it, I could do question mark, and then I could do math.log10, for example. Uh, and when I type that, I get this little window on the side here, return the base 10 logarithm vex. Um, so I get this little help function here, or sorry, help explainer here with whatever documentation has been built into the, uh, the module itself. And then you can do an X here. Uh, you can X out of this uh, to get yourself some screen space back. 
Now there's more modules we're going to use in this class. We're going to do a lot more with NumPy. We might touch on SciPy. We'll see how far we get with some of this. This is what you use for like line fitting. And we'll do a lot with uh, Matplotlib, which are all the plotting functions, which uh, you've seen a little bit at this point. Um, but whichever one you use, uh, you can use these methods to bring in any of those uh, functions. But I definitely recommend uh, this approach where you use a neck name. Uh, it's my favorite, and it avoids a lot of the pitfalls of uh, some of the other approaches. Okay, uh, good luck as always. Let me know if you have any questions. Take care.